So good morning guys. In this video, I'm gonna cover off my advanced Google Shopping optimization tactics. This is gonna be the first of three videos, which I'll eventually turn into a big one. But this one's gonna focus on feed, merchant feed optimization. So very popular video on the channel in the past, so let's get right into it. So let's jump into my screen. And basically guys, with the rise of Performance Max, I've noticed that a lot of people have actually forgotten about feed optimization uh, and how to optimize shopping campaigns because it's still important because most of the sales that come from Performance Max are actually from the Google shopping uh, area of Google. So what that means is that if you're neglecting feed optimization and you're not sure how to properly optimize shopping listings, you're missing out on a lot of sales. There also seems to be a rise in standard shopping. Like I'm using standard shopping, I always have used it quite a lot, but it seems that more and more people are using it more, particularly with all the issues that have happened with Performance Max. If you wanna know more about those, there's heaps of videos on the channel and the topic, I'll also leave them in the links below. So learning how to optimize your feed and how to maximize sales that come from shopping is vital for succeeding with Google Ads in this day and age. So in 2024, it's very, very vital. So what is the goal of optimization? Because you hear this term a lot, no one actually describes it. So what do we mean by optimization? So with Google Shopping and Google Ads, what we're doing most of the time is we're trying to increase impressions. This is gonna amplify our reach. So the changes that we make, our optimizations or improvements, are designed to increase the number of impressions we receive and hopefully over more products. We can also, to some extent, influence the click-through rate on our shopping ads. This means more visitors are gonna end up on our website and it's gonna to lead to a better quality score and thereby cheaper ads on Google. Lastly, we can, to some extent, also influence the conversion rate with our optimizations. This is definitely minimal compared to the other areas, but we can still impact it. So this is what I mean by optimization. So here's an introduction to optimization for shopping. So what can we do to make sure that everything is running to the best possible ability that we can, right? How can we make it run as optimally as possible? It boils down to three things. We've got our merchant feed optimization, so things that happen at the merchant center or feed level. We have our Google campaign optimizations. What can we do within the Google Ads Manager to make improvements? So think uh, not only standard shopping, but what can we also do to Pmax, and then what store optimizations can we make? Can we improve our landing page, our page speed, our conversion rate on the actual store itself? The third one is not my area of expertise to a great extent. I know the basics and I can show you some of them, but that will be in a later video. This video is gonna focus on the merchant feed optimizations. So what merchant center feed optimizations can we and should we be doing? So the more information you can give Google, the better. This is the rule I live by when it comes to Google Shopping feed optimization. The more info you give it, the better. The best way to do this is to actually go into your Merchant Center and have a look and see what are all the fields that are possible. I'm gonna include a cheat sheet, probably in the last video, it's not yet finished, on all of these and how you can add them. But for most of you, you can do it through your Google Feed app within Shopify, so your Google Sales Channel. The Simprosis app if you're using it or any of the other apps. You can manually do it, but that is not most people's preferred method because you know, you're know you leaving that up to human error a lot of the time. Like you've got the, the issue of human error in there. And, and if you're doing things manually and not automated, it's not great, but you can do a lot of this manually. And sometimes you might use a supplemental feed to add a lot of it or feed rules, but product and account errors are a big one. The titles are very important. Images, price, the category, the Google category, description, the GTIN, if you have one, don't worry if you don't. Reviews and promo extensions are all very important parts of feed optimization. But what are the needle movers? In my eyes, fixing Product and account errors are the biggest needle mover and they're the most overlooked thing. You need to be going in there regularly. Ideally, if you spend a lot and are making a lot of money from Google Shopping or Pmax or Google Ads, you need to be checking this daily realistically. Like most people can get away with weekly, but daily is the ideal. And what I mean check, you're going in there checking, is everything live? Are there product errors? 
The next most important thing in my eyes is the title and the image. These two are incredibly important because these are the things that draw people's eyes. In no particular order, probably the image is more important than the title, but the title triggers the ad. So what information is in the title tells Google what your product is. Price is a very important factor. The GTIN, if you have it, is a way that Google will know what you're selling. So the actual number itself doesn't matter, it's what it symbolizes. If you're selling something else that has a barcode and a lot of people are selling it, it's important because you're telling Google what is this product? Because at the end of the day, Google doesn't know what your product is. And one thing to note guys is that while these are happening in the feed at the moment, in the future, it may not happen. It may not be in the feed. From there, category, very important. Actually, potentially even more important higher up in terms of what Google looks at. It's one of the first attributes Google looks at. Which product category does this fill in, fit into? Because think about uh, like a mixer, okay? A mixer could fall into many categories. It could be a kitchen mixer. It could be a, a concrete mixer. It could be a mixer tap. There's so many uh, phrases in the English language that carry across multiple categories. So having that category there is very important to telling Google what you're actually selling. That's the goal of this. We want to tell Google what you're selling so that ads are triggered at the correct times and customers aren't confused because that's the last thing that you want and the last thing that Google wants. And lastly, the description is also important, a lot less so. It is important in telling Google what the product is, but it's not so much important for the conversion. I don't think people look at it that much. They look at it, but it's not the be all end all. The title, price, and image are far more important. So how do we fix some of these? Fixing merchant center errors, as I said, maintaining and ensuring that your merchant center is free from any errors is very, very important. You've got account issues, you have feed issues, and you have the product level issues. Obviously the account issues are very important. You do not want to get your account banned. If you have no Merchant Center account, your shopping ads and your shopping listings will not appear and your sales will tank if that's where you're getting sales from. And if you're just starting, you will not get many sales because most of them are coming from shopping. There are some areas where search still plays a big role, but shopping is king in e-commerce. So as I said, ideally daily, whatever it is, regularly go in there and check that your account is free of issues. Uh, and also any of these red in particular, red is bad, orange is not good, but sometimes you can't get rid of some of the orange ones, particularly in high risk categories. Fix as many of these as you possibly can. If you can't fix them, use a supplemental feed to try and fix them. Otherwise, contact someone, an expert on Fiverr, Upwork, or a contractor to help you fix these. It's very important. If your ads aren't showing, then how can you expect to make sales? This is the most important thing. What does that mean? Checking products are live. You want them to be green here, right? And over 90%, I would say, is good. Aim for high 90s. Sometimes it's very, very hard to fix some disapprovals, right? You can even see in this account here, we have you know, six, uh, 1,684 products live, 18 disapproved. Some of these disapprovals require getting information from a client. They require getting you images. Sometimes it takes time. So don't be worried about like 1%, 2%, as long as as many as possible, particularly your best sellers. You don't want your best sellers to have red. Uh, because it's gonna greatly impact your sales if that's the case. So fix these as often as you possibly can. The opportunities tab is also important. Um, it doesn't look like this. This is an old screenshot. I should have updated it, but basically the opportunities tab does give you some info as to what can you do to improve. It's still there, it just looks a little bit different to this. And I will have a video where I run through the merchant center in greater detail for you. So product title optimization. This is arguably one of the most important changes you can make to shopping campaigns. So now while this is an old study, uh, this case study I found, basically if you enhanced product titles, it led to 151% more clicks, 47% increase in CTR, and a 28% reduction in CPC. Now not everyone's gonna get that, but you can see that if you can improve these listings, you're going to get more impressions, more clicks, and if you do the right things, improve your CTR, reduce your cost per click. These are all things you want to do because the better the level of an advertiser you are, Google's gonna reward you. You really want to be aiming to getting that number one buy box by having a high CTR, having a high quality score, and a very good conversion rate. Because that top buy, I call it the buy box just like in Amazon, but that top shopping listing is very important because the way to, that's gonna get most of the sales, but the way to get it is to actually have the most number of conversions 
uh, in that particular search term and auction. So you wanna be getting a lot of conversions. You wanna be pushing and telling Google what this is. And by having, I'm not telling you to stuff, keyword stuff, uh, but you do want some uh, rich keywords in there that tell Google what it is. And I'll tell you a bit more as to how we actually do this. So what are the key requirements? Now, Google has a lot of requirements that I do recommend you check out. But these are the sort of rough idea, the, the rough rules I live by, and it's accurate and relevant. So relevant keywords need to be used because you cannot be using keywords that it's not exactly what it is. You wanna be telling people this is exactly what it is, be as descriptive as possible, but follow Google's requirements and best practices. So don't use excessive capitals, exclamation marks, things like free shipping, useless words. I see so many times people put things like, you know, Australia-wide shipping in there. Like it, you don't need to put that in there. Um, you, you don't put things like on sale now. Like things, if this isn't Facebook ads, this isn't meta ads. Like don't you do that. It's against their terms and conditions. The item will get flagged for either a reduction in impressions or it will just get banned completely. Uh, and then think and talk in a shopper's language. Put yourself in the customer's shoes. If you're a customer, what are you wanting to see? What's going to draw your eyes? What words would they be using when shopping? And you can look at the insights tab, your search terms report, things like that to get an idea. And you can do some keyword research that helps along with this. Um, the other thing you want to put is all of the most important information needs to go at the start. So whatever's the most important thing that the person is looking for, put that at the start. So if someone's looking for uh, a red Nike running shoe, I'd put Nike at the start because that is the most important thing there. And then red running shoe or running shoe red. They're the two options you would put there. But you could also put even more detail if you wanted to, like the style and whatever. But you want to put the most important information at the start. Play around with it though. Sometimes it's hard and, and sometimes what I find is if you see someone dominating a particular search result, you could just outright very similarly copy that, particularly if it's what you're selling. If you're selling the same thing, then you might start outranking them, particularly if you start focusing more budget to it. Yeah, you can go and outrank people and I do that regularly where I'll find a listing and I go, this is a good listing, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna try and improve it as well and I'm gonna push budget to it and I'm gonna knock them out of that position. So using high quality and accurate images. Don't use blurry images. Don't use images where people can't see what it is. They need to be eye catching. They need to be high quality. And you've got to follow Google's uh, exact um, terms and conditions when it comes to this. Don't have text over the top of it. These days you can have lifestyle images as well. It used to be very much, you had to use a white background and you know th that's what it was. But I recommend actually having an additional image link there and including some lifestyle images as long as the product is the main focus and people aren't confused. But I definitely do see that a lot of lifestyle type images now dominate search results. So that's definitely an area that, you know, I play around with it a lot using which image is gonna do the best. And it's not that easy. So quite often you just have to use the additional image link to get that product seen more, to test that image out. So images are very, 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 very important. And regularly search in shopping and see what listings pop out and stick out to you. It's a little bit like YouTube thumbnails. Like you know which YouTube thumbnails stick out. A YouTube thumbnail is very important. An image on your shopping ads is your thumbnail. It's very important. And to, to make sure that you, to actually be in, a, in the running, to make a sale, you need to get people to click that listing. Without getting that people clicking that listing, you're not gonna make a sale. So you need to focus on very high quality images. Retouching images, still going on images. If an image looks like the one on the left hand side, it's gonna look terrible in the feed. Sometimes it's funny that they will stand out, but you're not inspiring trust in your customers. Customers wanna see high quality images and they wanna trust the store. So if you're using lower quality images, make sure you have them retouched and make them look good. Ideally, you wanna compare it to other listings as well. And if you can do a slightly different angle or a better image, that's, that's a way to try and outrank a competitor because this is the micro adjustments that it takes to do really well with Google Shopping, Pmax, and feed optimization. This is how you win in e-commerce. As I said, the more info you can give Google, the better. Make sure you fill in all the available fields regardless of where you're putting it in. I don't care what you're using, put in the category. If you can put in color, size, material, gender, any information you have, the more the better. That's, that's the general rule. 
And as I was saying, try and differentiate your listings if you can. So what can you do? You can have promotion extensions if you're running promotions. They make the listings pop. You can have product ratings. You can have seller ratings. You can have local inventory ads, image angles being different, doing bundles. Whatever you can do to make your listings stand out is gonna be time well spent. This is where you should be spending your time. Like the amount of time that actually goes into the ads manager side is minimal compared to this. Now, you don't wanna overdo it either though. So this is sort of an ongoing process that you try one thing, you see if it works. You try another thing, you see if it works. And at the very start, you want things to be set up properly and to the best of your ability. Don't go in and half do this, you wanna do it well. So guys, this is the end of this video. In the next video, I'll cover off Google ad campaign optimizations and stay tuned for the actual cheat sheet that I will include in this. And if you need help with this, just reach out. I'll leave a link below on how you can get in touch with me. If you need help with the Google shopping optimization, uh, I do plan on running a few masterclasses, particularly around this topic as well. Um, so stay tuned for those, jump on the newsletter and you'll learn more about those. See you in the next video, guys.